my God, when I hit awesome Sometimes wonder, I wonder, consider all, when I look at the world, there you have made, I, I see, see the stars. The stars. Thank you. 
What's happening, family? It's time to pray. I want to look at Matthew 25 on today as we prepare our hearts to go to God in prayer. Let me bring before you a special emphasis. We've been in this season, we've been doing a lot of uh, improvising, adapting, and overcoming in light of the challenge of COVID, in light of the distance that we've done. And some of those things have helped to bring us into clarity with regard to what we should be doing with our resources. And one of the areas that we've been brought into more clarity is in looking at the resource of a building for what it's supposed to be and using that as an opportunity to see that God wants us to be a blessing. He wants us to use everything that we have to reach those that are out of the body of Christ, reach those that are in our community, reach those that are out and in need and are hurting and represent humanity all over the world. That's the calling of a Christian. A Christian is supposed to be salt. A Christian is supposed to be light. A Christian, quite frankly, is not a Christian unless they are disciples, followers of King Jesus. And if we follow Jesus, we'll do the things that Jesus did. Jesus reached out. And he reached out wherever he was to make connections with people for their well-being. This text reminds us of how when we do what we do, we do it for Jesus. I want to remind you of that just by reading the text. Go to God in prayer, but then also an encouragement for us to rally and to add some of the finishing touches to our outreach center. The place where we will use as an epicenter to do what God is calling us to do right here in this text. Listen to the word of God. The Bible says in Matthew 25, verse number 31, but when the son of man comes in his glory and all his angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate them one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep on his right hand and the goats on his left hand. Then the king will say to those on his right, come, you who are blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Watch this next part, verse 35. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Watch this about the righteous. The righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? And when did we see you a stranger and invite you in or naked and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? Watch what the king says in verse number four. The king will answer and say to them, truly, I say to you, to the extent that you did it to the to one of the these brothers of mine, even to the least of them, you did it to me. Then he will also say to those on his left, depart from me. You accursed ones into the eternal fire, which has been prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not invite me in naked and you did not clothe me sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they will, they themselves also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them. Truly, I say to you, to the extent that you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. These will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. That's a powerful reminder of the purpose of why we're here. We're here to reach out to those that are hungry, reach out to those that are thirsty, reach out to those that are strangers, reach out to those that are naked, reach out to those that are sick, reach out to those that are in prison. And from our outreach center, we will do just that. We're thankful that God has blessed us with the resource in which we can collectively come together and use it as a channel to be a blessing to all of those in our community. And even right now, even before the inside is ready, on the outside of the outreach center, we're already reaching out. God's gonna bless us, bless us to partner with individuals 
to do more to feed those that are homeless, to clothe those that are in need, to be a blessing to those that are sick mentally, sick emotionally, sick spiritually, sick physically, to be a conduit to bring those that are in prison into a place of liberation. God wants to bless us to use everything that we have and everyone who's a part of the kingdom of God to do just that. I'm thankful for everything that God has brought us to for the clarity we have in why we're using our resources and for the for the collaboration of brothers and sisters who want to bring God glory by reaching out to be just like Jesus. Remember this. Remember this before the enemy has a voice to speak to your spirit. We do it for Jesus. Why do we do it? I do what I do. You do what you do. We do what we do for Jesus. And Jesus was saying to the degree that you would do this for the least of the community. You did it for me. So let's thank God for the opportunity we have to come together to get our place ready to be a blessing as salt and light, to train, to develop, to serve, to reach out, to learn, to grow, to be equipped, to evangelize, to be empowered, to be those individuals who encounter God all for the glory of King Jesus to the degree that we do it for the least of these. We do it for him. So let's prepare our hearts. Let's prepare our minds. Let's prepare our spirits to be a blessing, to be salt and light for everyone around us. Pay attention to the news that we have right here. And then afterwards, we're going to come together and ask God to bless our efforts. What up, family? What up, what up, what up? I am standing in the, uh, the downstairs, what formerly used to be known as the Fellowship Hall. I'm here with Brother Hunter, and we have a, uh, an announcement, a message that we want to get out to everyone. But take a look at that. Look at this floor. Look how open this basement area is that allows us to do um, really, really whatever God lays on our heart to get done, but more importantly, to serve the community, connect with the community, share with the community, develop the community, grow the community, and focus on being salt and light in this community. Uh, we're almost there. We're almost there. Look, look at how nice that is. Look how open that is. Look at all of that. Isn't it awesome? It's absolutely awesome. Now, pay attention because Brother Hunter has some very important information he wants to share with you. And uh, we want you to be a part of this final part. As we're getting near, we're getting closer to the uh, uh, time when we can come back and use this building to do what God has called us to do. This outreach center is coming together. So, finish. Well, uh, Brother Thomas has already spoken to the, uh, as far as the mission is concerned, so I won't go into that. What I'm going to say to y'all is that um, all the heavy lifting has been taken care of already. We have come basically to the end of it, and we need help to clean up, and so, we are encouraging everyone, every member of the congregation from the one-year-old to the 100-year-old, come on down, get involved. This is your building. This is God's house. And we are hoping that you will listen to this message, take heed, come on down and help us. We need people to mop. We need people to dust. We need people to clean up in the kitchen. We need um, people to sweep and do all kinds of things around you that prepares is for the mission that Brother Thomas spoke about already. So I'm encouraging you to come on down, each and everyone, everyone, I mean all of us, come together, united as one, and put this place together, prepare God's house for the mission ahead. Thank you, and God bless. Y'all heard it from, from the Buildings and Grounds men. We need everybody, everybody. What age? Every age. From 1 to 100. 1 to 100. Don't matter. If you can hold a dustpan, we're talking to you. If you can hold a mop, we're talking to you. A broom, a vacuum, uh, anything. anything. It's time to scrub, time to clean, time to come together to get the outreach center where it needs to be. We want to reach out, but we want to make it look good while we are in the house. All right? If you can't physically do anything, come on down and cheer us on. That's right. And pray where you are. That's right. All right. God bless. God bless. More to come. It is definitely time for us 
to be excited. There's been so much work done on this building, so much that's been done on the outreach center that will allow us to be that much more significant in the community that we serve. I want you to pay attention to some of the pictures that are about to be shown. I want you to notice how from the outside in, there's been a lot that has been completely gentrified, completely done over again. Our basement area, as you remember, used to have a little library and it was uh, crowded up with spaces that did not allow for an open sort of functional ability for us to serve and outreach or even to fellowship with each other. Now it's been completely open. Tile has been laid out. One area that will be used multi-purpose as both a nursery and also a processing area for when we invite the community in and find out what we can find out about how we can help them. The building again will be functional in a manner that will allow us to serve every single day. Not, not just a place where we occupy twice and deem it so significant that it serves no other purpose any other time. The upstairs area has been again gentrified so that it can be useful for that very reason. We have office spaces that will be up. We're going to move and mobilize the, uh, the, the auditorium area with movable seating so that we can be dynamic and do as much up top as we can on the bottom. We'll, the, the goal again, service, outreach, partnering with entities so that we can be a blessing to those that are homeless, those that are disenfranchised, single mothers, children, those that want to partner to do work in our community, to rehabilitate those that are struggling with addiction, those that are that need uh, opportunities to build resumes, to, to work with jobs, all of the things that we can dream about doing as a ministry, this building will be an outreach center for us to do just that. Notice the outside. On the outside, we've removed that flower box that was there that really served no purpose to create more space so that we can walk and have that sidewalk area open. There's pavement all the way around the building and the pavement all the way around the building will prevent the water that was leaking in damaging the inside of the building. Little known fact for those of us that were behind the scenes, when we pull back the cover on where we were as a building, it was rotting because of the water seepage on the inside. And as a result of that, the building and grounds team decided that we needed to, to shore it up. Hence the pavement all the way around, giving us the ability to do even more on the outside, just as we did on the inside. The back uh, entry doors that were that were riding out and allowing weather to come inside and again create more damage have been completely changed. A lot has gone into making this tool more useful for the kingdom glory of God. And there's still a lot of work that needs to be done. We need to do our roof. We need to get our movable seating in. We need to change the flooring on top. There's a lot that needs to, needs to happen. But we're in a space where we can begin getting busy and begin getting our glory. And as you heard in the announcement, it's now time to start start doing some cleaning. I want to encourage you, those of you that have questions about what's what it, what it looks like, what it's all about, you don't have to be shy. You can come down, wear your mask, come take a look at what's going on, connect with Brother Hunter, connect with Brother Kunji, connect with Brother Evans, connect with myself, and you can find out exactly what's taking place at the Outreach Center at 24 Woods Avenue. But listen, we want to pray to God and ask God to bless us as we are reaching out to do what God has called us to do, to be salt, to be light, to remember that if we serve even the least of these, we are doing it for Jesus. We don't want a place or a space that just celebrates those that are saved. The goal, according to the scripture, is to do everything we do and use every resource we have for the kingdom glory of God. Let's pray for that. Father, we love you. We thank you. We bless you. We magnify and we praise you for being our God. We ask that you watch over us and watch over our hearts as we continue to surrender, continue to serve, continue to sacrificially give, continue to do all of what we do, Lord God, so that we can accomplish our pur purpose on this planet. Help us, Lord, to be a people whose hearts are renovated and changed so that we live and function and do what we do as a church for King Jesus, help us to evangelize, help us to be empowered, help us to equip the saints, Lord God, to do your work. Help us to encounter you in ways that change our lives for your glory. God, we pray that you bless us to be excited about people we haven't even met yet, souls that haven't been saved, individuals that we're going to serve, people that we're currently serving, and those 
that need to be equipped to get into service. God, I pray that you bless us. Give us your strength. Give us your favor. Give us your love. Give us your care. Use every resource that we have for your name's sake, for your glory's sake. And we will be careful as your people to give you all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor. For truly, Lord God, all of what we do is for you. It's all about you. We love you. We thank you. We bless you. And we magnify you. And in the name of Jesus, we together say and we together pray. Amen and amen. Paul would say, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ who lives in me. In the life that I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And because he gave himself for me, let's give ourselves to King Jesus. All of what we do is for him. It's not about us. It's all about him. Listen, I'm going to pray for you. I'm asking you, please pray for me and let's watch our God change everything around us. God bless you and God keep you. It's awesome. He can do.